Good morning. We've been in contact before. As you may recall, I am a painting conservator. This is an email that I just received this morning, so I wanted to share with you to give an idea of what I do. And, and uh, lately, I have been very interested in multispectral imaging, and uh, would like to ask you a few questions if you do, if you don't mind. I have an icon on D700, and uh, I have not yet been courageous enough to modify it to convert it to a wide spectrum camera. I was making my mind to buy the blah 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 uh, details. In addition, I was intrigued with the false color ultraviolet. Do I need to use the UV fluorescence or UV reflected? And then other questions, other details. Do you think that I should invest more to investigate paintings for my work? In other words, do you think that such techniques will do a great difference? In fact, I was interested to purchase blah 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 details. So, before spending so much, I thought of asking for your advice. Thank you so much for your time and interest, and interest best wishes, the painting conservator. Okay, so just to give you this, I received this email this morning to give an idea uh, what is my real, where I work. Um, cultural heritage science, uh, we know, is the uh, academic discipline that study works of art using uh, science and technologies. Uh, I was myself working in academia, was working in 2010 with Terrace Scanners, with, uh, here, where I met Earl at the Metropolitan Museum. Uh, I was working with a neutron reactor, and uh, I was working uh, a project with a lot of media coverage, like the search for a lost painting of uh, Leonardo in Florence, and in general, I was enjoying myself working with the geek stuff and whatever new technology, atomic force microscope, RAM, XRF, FTIR. Uh, I'm a physicist, so definitely I was really interested to try this new technology as much as possible. But at a certain point, I realized three years ago that uh, tools developed in academia are expensive and complex, and should be complex, because I've developed in academia. I mean, it's, uh, you do research, advanced research, uh, great tools, but what happens is that since they are expensive and complex, there is often a gap between academia and the art and archaeology sector, and consequently, just a little few big museums and big institutions can uh, enjoy these uh, technologies. So I'm talking about the big museum, they have conservation studios, conservation research uh, laboratories, scientific research laboratories, and so they really enjoy this uh, partnership. But then uh, what happens is that the other majority, what I call the 99% of uh, uh, professionals in the art and the archaeology sector, they don't have access to often any technology. So cultural heritage science open source is uh, an initiative uh, to build a bridge to bring some science, a little bit, to the art archaeology sector that cannot afford the expensive and complex tool. Uh, so, uh, at CHSOS, Cultural Science Open Source, we do this by promoting just, affordable and sustainable technologies for art examination. So everything that is over some cost or is too complex and need to to full professor to operate it, uh, three PhD students, it's not what we are dealing with. Because the idea is to serve a larger community made of conservators in the medium small businesses, uh, art appraisers, uh, archaeologists, uh, fine art photographers who are using some imaging, some technical photography. So this is the people basically that we are trying to serve. Uh, and we do this by developing and uh, disseminating these technologies. So, developing what kind of tools we are into. So, it's really the basic stuff. So, for example, we, with, uh, we uh, yeah, developed a system for technical photography that is easy. So, a modified uh, full spectrum camera. So, as the guy, the painting conservator, asked, a set of four filters that we defined. 
and with this tool you can do a set of technical photography for um, reflected ultraviolet, ultraviolet fluorescence, transmitted infrared, infrared fluorescence, uh, infrared and infrared false color. These are technologies, are techniques that are, were already known in the sector, so it's not like uh, I developed them. But uh, uh, what I do is uh, I make it clear how to set up this equipment. So like that guy called me, wrote an email to know what to buy, where to buy, how to modify the camera and so on. For example, infrared reflectography, it's used to look through a painting, we see the underdrawing, like in this case. But the problem with this technique is that the images are very small. So it's necessary to have an infrared scanners, which are expensive. So what we did is uh, to use a panoramic head, uh, using photography, for panoramic photography, to do panoramic infrared reflectography, which this system will cost just a fraction of what an infrared scanner will do. Uh, we also introduced, and we manufacture, a little tool, it's called the pigment checker, that is a collection of 54 historical pigments that we selected, and, uh, and we developed this tool uh, in order to laboratories, universities, uh, small conservation studios, uh, they can have it, and they can practice technical photography, so they can see how the different pigments behave in the different techniques. Uh, so it's uh, nothing new, but it's a tool that uh, allows everybody with a little investment to practice and test this, uh, the technology. Uh, was made also for infrared reflectography, and indeed the pigments have been painted over a, a crosshair uh, grid, so that you can evaluate your infrared imager, how much it goes into the pigments. And uh, it it can be used for spectroscopy, and we developed a, a free spectral database. So we made uh, the reflectance already, so everybody can download this spectra, so can test its own equipment uh, with a set of uh, pigments, and also we are developing a Raman XRF and FTIR database, collaborating with some universities that are doing this uh, as a collaboration. Then, in order to be successful, apart of disseminating or creating these uh, technologies, uh, uh, we need to have a strong dissemination program. So, we do uh, a lot of publications. Our publications are aimed at teaching professionals how to use these uh, technologies. So, our titles are such as uh, A Practical Guide to Panoramic Multispectral Imaging, uh, A Practical Guide to the Highlight Method for uh, Reflectant Transformation Imaging, uh, Practical Notes on uh, Ultraviolet Photography, uh, Technical Recommendation for uh, Panoramic Infrared Reflectography, uh, we made a database of reflectant spectra, and uh, we are trying to use uh, like a digital camera, so no, we try to use not scientific tools that are much more expensive. So instead of a CCD camera, scientific camera that's going to be expensive, we try to use uh, adapt a digital camera you can find on the market for a couple of thousand dollars. Uh, then what uh, we do? We have a blog, of course, a website is the uh, chsopensource.org. And uh, uh, we have a community that is growing. So now we are reaching the 6,000 views per month. And uh, it's this community of conservators, art photographers, archaeologists that uh, are following these uh, developments. Then uh, what we do is we offer an art examination service on site. So using, because the idea is that I develop these uh, tools because these are the tools that I use in my own business as doing art examination on site. So I develop for my own, so I know that uh, uh, actually uh, they work on the field. So here is a little video, I show the, um, how I do this examination. 
So basically the idea is to have a mobile laboratory, so made of luggage, checked luggage, a small luggage that I call it Ryanair proof, the Ryanair is the economy, the cheap uh, tool in, uh, in Europe to, to fly, and uh, to offer to the clients taking your photography, infrared reflectography, multispectral image, reflectance spectroscopy, RTI, all with this uh, mobile setup. So the cost of traveling is, uh, is very low and uh, we can get some information. It's not complete setup, but it's still something that we can offer at a reasonable cost for, uh, uh, for our clients. Yeah, and then uh, as a pack in traveling, it's nice when we are, I'm in Sicily based, so here it's uh, just traveling from Sicily to, to Puglia, and, uh, and then coming back home there in a this small village in Sicily. And um, then uh, what we do is offer training programs. So we teach these technologies also in person. Here is an example of what we do and uh, who wanted to have this training program? An art conservation studio, medium size, so they want to do a little bit of technical photography, ultraviolet, infrared, maybe know a little bit more how to handle an Ingas camera. Uh, I had the pleasure to have a European institution, the Cyprus Institute, the Hercules Laboratory from Portugal, so they are interested to this thing. And um, uh, also some art diagnostic companies, so they already do maybe spectroscopy, they are very good into spectrol, and art appraisers. And they are a little bit. And, uh, and there was also in an extra European institutes uh, in, in Ecuador. Uh, so their um, their Minister of Culture and Heritage wanted to have an image in laboratory, they contacted me. So I went there for three weeks and I taught them what to buy, what, how to set up the equipment, how to put all the things together. And uh, so, so far in three years uh, we have been uh, serving uh, 16 countries, providing on-site art examination, so these different clients with paintings, or so basically it's uh, for uh, some art conservation project, some, some uh, uh, authentication project, on-site trainings. So we go there to provide this training with our mobile equipment. Uh, training at the CHS studio, so people come to Sicily, uh, and, and it's a good excuse to visit Sicily and Italy uh, from different places and, uh, and also I enjoy it, even if I'm just a little business, uh, I enjoy to be invited, I'm here also to be also recognized by the academic uh, um, world that uh, see some value in what I'm doing, even if I use these poor technologies. Um, so basically the idea is every year to grow. Uh, so 2013 we started with making this uh, technical photography setup, uh, this uh, panoramic infrared reflectography, so publishing, making a lot also dissemination on the internet. 2014 we were into RTI, uh, so publishing um, how to how to apply to different case studies, uh, doing reflectance spectroscopy with this mobile miniaturized tool. Uh, that are nice for our on-site work. 2015, I developed this uh, multispectral imaging system that I'm going to talk about now. So basically, multispectral imaging is the topic <coughs> of uh, today, and the idea is that between the visible and the uh, near-infrared, uh, reflectance uh, or pigments have features that allow to distinguish them. So uh, what I see in MSI, multispectral imaging as application, is basically for mapping pigments. So I wanted to see in paints, locate them. So we have this painting and we have the multispectral imaging. So in the gray is where there are the in paints. And uh, to read the faded pigments and ink. So when you have wall paintings that is faded, historical documents, these are the main application I see for MSI. Uh, of course, there are plenty of commercial systems that do MSI, and uh, what I see is that they are uh, expensive. I mean, that, that's, this is the main issue, uh, and uh, they are not easy to modify, adapt, and upgrade. So they are what I call a black box. So you have this black box, uh, you can buy it, and you can use for what they are designed to do, but it's not easy to modify or upgrade or change it to the specific needs. What I mean is uh, uh, I'm just a small business doing art examination, so like a conservation studio, 
And I want to have a multispectral imaging that I can use. Sometimes I have a client that has an historical document, so it's a little object. Sometimes I want to do multispectral imaging on a wall painting, on a cave, for example. So, I mean, you understand that a black box system that is made to work very well for a small uh, manufacture for a more small uh, manuscript, it doesn't necessarily work well when you have a wall paintings. It has some issues. So the idea is to make something that you can upgrade, change, and think about it. So it's an open box that we thought about, and uh, it, has, it had to be cheap, less than four thousand dollars. So made just using commercially available parts, uh, using free software user-friendly, because the idea is that I want to empower the conservator to understand what, what is gonna do, going to do, what, uh, uh, what is going to do. So the, a little bit of the basic of the technology, the physics behind it. So you can actually do it uh, and understand what's going on. So it should be light, white, small, because the idea is to use it on the field, so on scaffolding, on wall paintings, traveling with it on, for myself that I need it when I travel and uh, easy to understand, modify, and upgrade. So in order to develop tools, and this was my biggest project so far, because before I was doing technical photography, panoramic things, so I could buy stuff with my saving and something like that. But to do a multi-spectral imaging, I thought I needed a little bit more help. And uh, since I'm just a small business, I didn't have the money, and I could not... Uh, um, since I'm a little business, I cannot, I'm invisible to government's funding, and you don't have any access to that. So what I thought <coughs> is to launch the first crowdfunding in conservation science. So uh, I, I asked the community that was already following me by the website, this is 6,000 people per month, to contribute if they saw there was a value in making a, a, a multispectral imaging system that was cheap, that could be put together, uh, if they saw value in it to contribute some money. And indeed we got 43 people that contributed from uh, uh, basically 16 countries, so United States mostly, Italy, Belgium, even from uh, Puerto Rico. Yeah, and we collected $10,000, so it was higher than I expected. So I spent some time at a while. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, and so, <laughs> just kidding, yeah, so, just kidding. Anyway, so this is uh, uh, the system. Here's a little video showing. Well, this is my studio. There in Sicily now, I'm making another one. So basically, it's using a digital camera, modified full spectrum, so we cover the visible and the near infrared. I made this adapter with the 3D printers that could buy with this funding. And I bought a set of filters and I made also the box with the 3D printers. It's cool for me. So. And I went just so you can, uh, with this camera, you can take these images. You can make a spectral cube use the, using this uh, free software and uh, getting this uh, reflectance spectra that uh, was uh, the final goal. That I'm going to talk you a little bit better. Yeah, and that is a, a mapping. Uh, so, the, what is the system is made with a full spectrum digital camera covering 360, 1100 1, nanometer. And uh, why I use a digital camera rather than a monochromatic CCD camera? Because the idea is I, I need it for my work as the other conservators do. So the idea is I, I want to bring in my suitcase just one, um, uh, one camera. So this camera I can use for technical photography, ultraviolet, infrared, and so on. I can use it for RTI, 3D photogrammetry, if it's necessary, and so on. So I wanted to use just the same camera for multispectral imaging. Uh, then I selected 18 filters. Uh, they are one diameter right now, and they are, they are small just to be affordable, because as you know, uh, the bigger they are, the cost grow exponentially uh, with the diameter. So I started at least uh, with this uh, one inch uh, dimension. Uh, they are bandwidth of 10 nanometer, uh, and uh, uh, the idea was uh, to center the wavelength of each uh, filter based on the features of the pigments. Because basically we have to develop this system 
and uh, pigments have features in some area of the spectral range. So instead of having the filters just spaced equally across the range, I thought to just choose them based on where there are inflection point, maxima, uh, minima <coughs> of the pigments, because basically this is a tool developed to analyze historical pigments. Okay, so this is uh, basically the 3D printed uh, filter adapter, just a thing just to hold it. And uh, I made also a gray card, because the gray card, uh, I mean, when you do multispectral imaging, you need in scene, uh, a gray card in scene, uh, then to do the calibration. Uh, and basically what uh, I used before, like the AIC calibration card, uh, it probably has titanium white to make the white, and anyway, what we see is that they absorb this gray, it's not flat, the white and the gray are not flat, but they absorb in the close ultraviolet, near ultraviolet and in the violet. So they could not be used, so I made my own uh, gray card that I measured with a reflectance spectrometer. Okay, and so uh, the next step was to develop a workflow. So the idea is that I shoot the image and then in a, I open them in image J. So we are talking about raw file format and I split them into the RGB component, but uh, natively, so not in Photoshop, but using this tool and image A. So, it, you know, the sensor is, uh, it's like you really separate the, uh, the filter, each filter. Then uh, there is, uh, in image A, uh, is a workflow to do the registration, the calibration of the image, and then I use Hypercube, that is under free software, to build the uh, hyperspectral cube. So to make the reflectance spectra and, uh, and to do eventually the mapping. So these are the uh, spectra, the reconstructed spectra that I can get and uh, compared with the one collected with the reflectance spectrometer. So these are the spectra of lead white, it's flat over there, titanium white. Basically, you see, I chose this filter over here. It was really necessary in order to get the, the absorbance of the titanium wire. <clears throat> uh, so we have like a chrome green that has a very peculiar peak over here, particularly in the, in the ultraviolet. And uh, so basically this system allowed to collect the, for azurite, ultramarine, the shape of the, the pigments, they compare pretty well. Also, we were able for the red ochre to see the characteristic shape, these two, uh, two maxima that they have there. And uh, it works pretty well in uh, documenting the, like the yellow pigments, like Latin yellow that have this uh, sharp inflection point. And uh, so what we use it, so the idea is we have this conservator and uh, you need this tool to do something. And uh, what you do, this is just a mock-up that I made with uh, basically some, uh, oh, so it's like in a renaissance looking painting somehow. And uh, you have here, for example, is ultramarine, this area is azurite. Uh, so this is cadmium red and this is uh, red ochre. So basically the idea is to have a painting that is like being retouched in, with ink paints. This is uh, how it was uh, made, the, the coloring, so uh, ultramarine, azurite, and so on. And basically, with this tool, you can do uh, these things. Basically, this is a mapping made with this uh, uh, multispectral imaging system. Uh, so you can achieve the, the possibility to distinguish pigments and map them. Uh, that was basically the result. Now, how our system compare with what is available on the market? On, uh, from other companies and research laboratories. Uh, th this is uh, how I see it. You know, it's, you know, it is a uh, Fiat 500. And the idea is that uh, uh, this tool is developed for businesses like mine. Uh, so when you have a business, you have to care about maintenance because I mean, if something is broken, how to repair it? Now, this system is made with 3D printed tools, uh, filters that are just available and you can buy from any companies and they are not uh, linked to anyone. So maintenance is, ve is very uh, little. Return on investment. 
uh, how many times a normal business has to do multispectral imaging? Uh, very few times, because in general, if you want to look for a repaint, uh, repaintings in paints in a painting, you just do infrared, ultraviolet, you already can see them. So it's, it's very useful, MSI, if you have to study <coughs> historical documents that are faded, you want to study faded wall painting. So these are things that, you know, could happen once per year, two times. So, I mean, of course, a little business, a conservator studio, want to invest a little money of it, because it's not something that you are going to use routinely. Then what I like about my system is adaptability, because basically we can use, uh, uh, for example, uh, let's say uh, we have to work on a small manuscript, so I use a 50 millimeter lens on the system. If I have to, uh, to work on a wall paintings, I will use a wide angle lens. So I can just change these things and uh, the system just use, uh, uses uh, halogen lamps. So normal lamps, so if you have to do a wall painting, so you use a 1000, 1000 watts lamp and that's fine. And so it's, uh, uh, the adaptability is important. And what I say is low, because you have to change filters manually, but we can go places. Anyway, so uh, with, uh, such as with our Cinquecento. Uh, if uh, you are really into it, so for example, as a business, you have uh, plenty of people that ask you to do multispectral imaging, you can just upgrade it, why not? So you could use uh, an apochromatic lens, uh, for example, that costs $5,000, so you don't have to, this is an issue, you have to refocus each time you know, when you move from visible to infrared. Uh, so you can upgrade it, so you don't have to refocus uh, every time. You can use the bigger filters, so 50 millimeter filters, so you don't have any issue with uh, uh, a that you have when you do with uh, small filters. Uh, and this is uh, the first group of people that came there in Sicily to have a training on this multispectral imaging system that just developed. They participated to the crowdfunding and uh, they just came over for three days and they had this uh, training on technical photography, panoramic infrared photography, and the multispectral imaging system. And they came from, uh, from, uh, uh, from Texas, San Antonio. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah.